Okay, well, I've started uh, working on shaping the airfoils, and I'll show you the um, actual airfoils here in a second, but I thought I'd um, just kind of explain why I'm doing what I'm doing on the airfoil uh, with a basic diagram, and uh, I'll draw some stuff on here. Um, what, uh, you know, this in this configuration, we're kind of looking at more like a, an airplane wing. Um, this would be the leading edge out here that would be, um, you know, kind of into the wind. And then back here we have the uh, trailing edge where the air is going to flow. Um, so what, we're, what, what we look for is this laminar flow with air. Um, and uh, you'll see what happens when we draw this. But on the top of the airfoil, what uh, will uh, take place is a higher speed. Uh, and therefore a, law, a lower pressure relative and uh, on the uh, bottom side of the wing um, a slower speed and a relatively higher pressure so um, they, they call it lift but it's really you know more of a push because you've got this higher pressure of air relatively speaking under the wing lower pressure of air generated on top of the wing therefore the wing is pushed upwards or lifted upwards. So what? Well, why does this happen? Well, if we have some molecules of air that strike this leading edge, we'll say there's whoops, two molecules right there, and they hit this leading edge at the same time, um, this one at the top has um, that uh, these two are going to split, we'll say. This one here on the top that uh, takes this path has a lot further distance as it's coming down along that leading edge to get back here. This one takes the more direct path to get back here. Now they split here at this, at this instant in time and they meet back up here at this instant in time. So in order for them to meet back up at the same time, this one has to travel much faster. And that's what happens. This air on top of the wing travels much faster than the air underneath the wing, creating slower uh, pressure for this fluid. Air is a fluid just like water as this flows a little slower. Higher pressure builds as this travels faster. Lower pressure builds and we lift. So you can see this general shape now of this kind of bulbous leading edge into the wind and this really narrow sharp pointed trailing edge where they meet back up again. And that's what we want to achieve on these on these cutout pipe pieces. So let me set this down and set my pencil down and uh, in order to do this you know basically the simple tools I've got a little rasp here I've got my uh, uh, grinding wheel and uh, and some sort of sander and then sanding blocks and pieces of sandpaper. Let me show you the uh, first one here, the rough cut. Uh, remember this started off as a quarter piece of six inch pipe and then the uh, the leading edge has been created and the trailing edge. Of course now it's they're really, really rough and the way this is going to mount on the hub arbor is like this and you can kind of see when we square that up you can see that this leading edge kind of leads the way um, as with the twist and the curve of the uh, pipe so now we need to create on here we need to create that bulbous leading edge and it's kind of already there but then the back is squared off just as much so we need to create that trailing edge so with the grinder and the sander and all that. Here, let's look at it from the side here too. So you can kind of look here from the side and you can kind of see that everything is the same. Um, there really isn't a difference. So by grinding and sanding and kind of working our way down, you can see this is the way it would mount now with this one that I'm pretty much happy with as my um, this one, by the way, was that lightest wing, too. Um, it was 11 and a half ounces, so the other ones I'll end up having to take more material off to bring the weights uh, fairly even. 
Okay, so you can kind of see that it's roughed up. It doesn't have that shine like that one does. So you can kind of see now that this leading edge has been created. And the trailing edge, see now how much thinner that is on that trailing edge. And if we look from the um, side, now you can see it's, ta it's taking that shape of that bulbous front that we saw in the drawing. Now again, the drawing was a little over enhanced for, for educational purposes, but you can see this natural, and here it's really short, and let me try to get it in the background so it kind of shows up better, but you can kind of, you can see that, that uh, shape that I'm talking about with the thin trailing edge and the bulbous leading edge. So again, that kind of makes its way all the way down. And when it would be mounted in the hub, you can see that trailing edge is going to hit us first. So that air is going to strike here and go across the top surface or this bottom surface. And of course with a wind turbine, the wings are, you know, in this awkward vertical position, whereas an airplane, it would be coming at us like this. So we just turn it up, but it's the same principle. And since the the you're going to get this momentum now, this 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 wing is going to want to turn. It's going to want to fly and lift that way, but because it's on a radius, uh, this hub, it's going to end up spinning in that direction. So that's where we're at. I think I'm pretty happy with the way this one turned out. I would warn people. You see those little two little nicks there. That was because I wasn't thinking, <laughs> as usual, and uh, I was sanding and grinding away, and of course this plastic PVC heats up, and I set it down um, and started to push, and it went into the, uh, to the edges of these little sawhorses that I'm using, so um, kind of like a bird strike, so we'll call that, <laughs> learned my lesson there, we got a little bird strike, and to get those out, it's, they're pretty deep, so I'm not going to worry about them. Um, and the wing should still work pretty good so but now I will paint these because this you know has a bit of a rough feel to it now so I'll paint these to get a nice smooth um, surface for that laminar flow and keep that keep that air moving tight against there we don't want it breaking away and swirling we want that air to flow nice and tight along that surface and uh, so we'll clean this up and get that painted nice and smooth so that laminar flow is maintained the way we want it. So anyway, that's where that is. And now I just have the wonderful task. This will be the hard part, I think. The, probably the hardest part of this whole process will be to balance these blades. Uh, getting all three to be the proper um, weight uh, so that they're all really close together. So when you spin the um, propellers, once they're mounted, you know, one blade doesn't just automatically drop to the bottom with uh, being heavier. Uh, it's kind of a random thing. So um, that'll be critical. And what we'll do is this one, this lighter weight one, will serve as our master. And once I feel like I've, I'll weigh this one again, write the weight down. When I get this one close to this weight from grinding, uh, then we'll, uh, we'll stop get the other one done and then once I have all three of them fairly close then we'll mount them uh, on the motor and uh, spin it and see which blades kind of fall over and over again and make a mark we'll, we'll put a number one two and three on them and we'll kind of record which one keeps falling down and we know that one we've got to take more weight off so it'll be kind of a trial and error process but We'll get there. Hopefully I'll have this finished before we go to Oregon. Anyway, that's, that's where this is at. Talk to you later. Bye.